Well, you should tell the facts. The facts. That almost needs a title in your piece. What are the facts? Well, the facts are everything that occurred. But through whose eyes? I'm filming a slum uptown Harlem in New York City. There is one room with four children, all sleeping together, and the mother, no father. Dirty as hell, a hole in the wall, a door that has some grease on it. The woman works. What's the truth? Truth one, what a crappy America that allows this to go on. This heroic woman with these four children working. How could America do this? We stink. Is that the truth? Truth two, just because you're poor doesn't make you dirty. My people were poor. We came from Ireland or Italy or France, but we kept a clean house. Cleanliness next to godliness. You're a slob. Is that the truth? It's the truth. Truth. You shouldn't have those four kids. You did that. I mean, that man, first of all, he's a slime ball. He's not there. Second of all, have two kids. You know about birth control. Is that the truth? Another truth. Um, it's not about America. And it's not about what we're not doing for this lady. She's a hero. She leaves her home and goes to work and makes that minimal amount of money. A heroic story. Is that the truth? Truth. Three of the four kids have snot coming out of their nose. Wipe the snot. You can get something that gets them over these constant colds. Truth. She hits them. Now, I wouldn't have put that in the movie that made America to blame. I'd edit that out. And I wouldn't put that in the movie where she goes off to work and is such a hero. But she hits him. And I don't like it. And I'm going to tell that story. Don't hit those kids. I don't care what your attention level is. Even if 90% of your people believe children should be hit, and I think in America, 45% of Americans believe children should be hit, and 45% don't. I don't. That's my truth. What I'm saying to you is there is no truth. There never was any truth. There's my truth. The New York Times has this wonderful phrase. It says, I think all the news that's fit to print. Well, who decides that? Or well, something like that. I th if you look on the Times, it says that. Well, when I was growing up, the New York Times, to my parents, was the truth. No doubt about it. It said so in the Times. Only when I became an adult did I realize things that I was experiencing, uh, such as when I went to Alaska in the oil crisis and saw it from the Alaskans' perspective. Well, the New York Times wasn't telling that truth. It was telling the truth from a New Yorker's perspective of how oil companies were destroying Alaska. I realized that, my God, that wasn't the truth I was hearing from the Alaskans, so whose truth is truth? I think people ought to be straight about that. Now, I think Michael Moore is, and he's very good at it. He makes something that almost looks like fact. <laughs> and any intelligent viewer knows he's very good at that. If I like his facts, yeah, that's the fact I accept. And if I don't like his facts, he's still good at making them. Some people get very angry at Michael Moore. You know, you didn't tell the truth. Well, nobody said he should. He's a filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker. Television doesn't tell the truth. Uh, how good at my, how good, how good am I at faking the truth in order to tell an ultimate truth that really is truth, in my view? That's a critical question for every filmmaker. If I believe this man is a hero, what can I do to enhance the look of that? But you didn't do that truthfully. It's a documentary. You staged that scene. Yeah, I did. But ultimately, I think he's a hero. That's the truth. That's my truth. Now I'm going to stage that scene. Walter Cronkite used to say, and that's the way it was September 28th, 1968. And that was the nightly CBS News. And in the 60s, we got the idea, wait a minute, that wasn't the way it was. You didn't have that piece of news. You told it a certain way. And it was a shocking moment that affected a generation. But unfortunately, that 
lesson doesn't last so that on YouTube, we all know that things are created. There's all kinds of fake things, but if you read the comments very often, the viewers are thinking it's either the truth or it's not, not realizing that everything is created just by the nature of the fact that the camera is there. So for your audience, as creative people, when you admit you are telling a story, everything is a story. When you admit that even if you're a true believer, that is, it is the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Everything I said is the truth. And I believe Michael Moore is a true believer. He believes his truth. I still am dramatically creating scenes, selecting things in the editing room, writing script a certain way. That's a great awareness that makes for much greater creative work. The realization that is coming from me, that I must know me, the more that I know me on the inside, my prejudices, my loves, what I want to say about something is, my, is every single film. I'm working on a film right now, a feature documentary, I'm just beginning, on, the, on gamers and gaming and the guys who play games and some women also. It has a history. I'm not a gamer. I'm an innocent. Why does somebody spend hours and hours playing some Warcraft game? I don't get it. That's a wonderful place for me to be. I enter every character in this film with a, why are you doing that? That makes for a good movie. He can tell me all the basic stuff that he wouldn't tell other f gamers because they already know it. You know, they always say, who should interview my mother when she's reached her 75th birthday? Me, because I'm her son. I know more about it than anybody. Oh, really? What is she not going to tell me? What is she going to assume I already know? What is she going to short circuit? You, Bruce, doesn't know her, never saw her, never met her, walks in cold. She's going to tell you everything. She's going to tell you if you say, could you describe the street you lived on? She's going to tell you all the details because you never saw it. My vote is always be innocent, always be naive, always be asking the innocent question. Never talk to somebody else in front of the camera as though you know what they know because all they'll do is short circuit the answer and what you really want is the answer told fully, three-dimensionally, filled with possibilities for you to cut away,